Good afternoon, Geog 5 students. This is your instructor, and I would like to spend a little bit of time today doing a demo on GIS and the use of GIS. We have a lecture this week talking about kind of the advent of GIS, this sort of merger of mapping and computer technology that happened um, in the mid-1960s and has evolved in the intervening years. And so this is an opportunity to uh, demonstrate how GIS is used and also to um, illustrate some of the fundamental concepts that we use in, um, in GIS and some of the ways in which we can uh, take advantage of the capabilities. So I am in ArcGIS, um, the industry standard GIS software. Um, this is an application called ArcMap within this umbrella product called ArcGIS. And the basic layout that we have here is a map screen with uh, a table of contents. And this illustrates the fundamental GIS concept of map layers. And in this case, I've got a base map that's up. This is a National Geographic base map. And this is a single layer in my uh, view. And you can see that it includes labels and water features and a park boundary layer and a roads, um, not as individual layers, but simply as a simple, uh, a single raster image. The raster format is used for um, images and also when you have um, like scanned maps, something in which you're representing f um, the landscape using cells or pixels. Uh, similarly, a aerial image is something that will also be based in the raster format. And um, in this case, we can see features of the Lassen Park, including Lassen Peak. And if you zoom in close enough when you're working on this sort of imagery, it'll start to get a little fuzzy. And eventually, you'll actually be able to discern the individual pixels that compose this image raster. OK, so in our GIS, um, of course, we are able to bring in data from a wide variety of sources. And so imagery is uh, a critically important component. It's important as a visual backdrop, but also we can derive additional information from imagery as we're, uh, as we're working. So in keeping with our GIS format, and the layer format, I'm going to add some layers in here. So here is the Lassen Park boundary. We're now working in the vector format in which coordinates are used to, well, you can see that the corners of this uh, boundary actually occupy very discrete locations. So those coordinate values that represent these corners are then connected by lines, and those in turn can produce uh, enclosed areas or polygons. And those are the three fundamental components of a vector file. Uh, they can either be point, line, or polygon. So let's bring a few other layers in. We could look, for example, at the drainages. This is another vector layer. You can sort of see the drainages radiating out off of uh, Lassen Peak, which is the highest elevation in the park. And uh, we could also come in and drape um, watersheds over the top of this. So you can see that uh, individual drainages occur uh, within these bounded areas that we call watersheds. And we can actually automate the generation of those watersheds based on uh, the topography of the land. We can drop our uh, major lake features on. These are actually polygon features that are being dropped on top of the line features that compose the, uh, the hydro layer. And one of the 
essential assets to our data is that not only do we have this visual map representation, but we also have attributes which are stored in a table and these are dynamically linked and so I'm now in the major links layer and I've selected the lake, uh, po the polygon feature that corresponds to snag lake and then we'll see some features in here like area and perimeter and then there's some internal processing uh, fields uh, that are used especially in uh, government um, agencies that are generating data sets they'll have their own um, sets of fields that they'll uh, put in information not always intuitive as to what those things are composed of and then we can start to look at some additional features that we might be interested in for example uh, roads and trails so now we're showing the ro the main road through the park is in this dark sort of orange color and then we can see uh, the principal trails showing up in purple. Again, we can select any given one of these features. And they'll give us some information like the type of the trail, how it was collected. So now we see our global positioning system as a vital source of data for input. And we can look at some general features of the landscape. For example, we might be interested in looking at the geology of the park and in this case this geology layer is uh, quite robust and detailed uh, as a result of uh, the work being done by the National Park Service to differentiate and delineate these areas and we have an ability now to be able to do some basic uh, analysis of our results and so uh, let's see I'm going to pull up something called the effects layer and we're looking at geology and I'm interested to know what the geology looks like in relation to Lassen Peak itself and so now I have the ability to be able to examine the imagery underneath and of course we could zoom in on this as well if you've never had the opportunity this is a um, mountain that you can climb without any kind of technical background it's just a long uphill hike recently reopened and uh, again we could go through and examine some of these different features that are identified and we could come back in again with our identify tool and choose individual areas and find out how these are classified we actually have to cross-reference these labels to the actual geologic type uh, next, I want to look a little bit at uh, vegetation. And in this case, uh, we were able to acquire a vegetation layer for the park. Let's just go ahead and zoom back out to the park boundary. So if you're interested in um, how to learn to use this uh, particular software, you want to sign up for the um, Geog 10 class, which is offered in the fall. That's the intro to GIS class. We won't be using much of this. Uh, we, we really won't be using this particular software in our class at all. And so you can see here, this is the uh, vegetation layer that was um, created previously. We can look at how this was uh, classified. We can actually go back in and change the colors that were used for this uh, this classification so uh, we might choose to just assign some other uh, colors to these areas and uh, we'll go ahead and apply this and see what it looks like there we go so we've changed the colors a couple of these are shown in this real dark border which is not particularly helpful but um, I think you get the idea now this next one I wanted to particularly um, focus on because one of the benefits that we get from uh, imagery is the ability to let software analyze the uh, reflection and the color of uh, what appears on an image and in turn we can use that to 
um, create our own vegetation layer. And so this is a coarse classification that was done from imagery. And once again, I'll go ahead and drop this into this effects layer so that we can examine what the imagery looks like underneath. And you can discern, for example, in this area where this purple area that's evidently uh, unvegetated. So you can see the unvegetated areas appear fairly clear in this uh, light purple coloration. And we've got a um, the light blue and the yellow are differing densities of vegetation. So in order to validate our results, we actually, uh, this was a class project, we actually drove in on the uh, park road and we took some of these trails since those were going to be the places we were able to access in the park and we generated a series of sampling points and so these sampling points then allowed us to come in and say in addition to the classification that we've done in, in uh, working in the lab, we're able to actually go out in the field and examine what we're able to see with our eyes and uh, further validate our uh, vegetation data. And this in turn opens up a lot of opportunities for being able to uh, perform other kinds of analysis such as the relationship between geology and vegetation. Okay, so we might be interested in knowing what particular vegetation is found in certain geologic types, and that's sort of a, a relationship analysis that we can perform. So remember, your fundamentals with GIS include data collection and management. So you see lots of data in the screen here the display of that data for generating maps, and also analysis. So manage data management, analysis, and display. Those are the three. Now, one of the big trends that has happened in recent years is that we're getting a lot more tools and ease of use in the online environment. And so this you will be using a little bit later in the semester. And this is ArcGIS Online. You don't have to have any particular license to be able to view this data. We have an account in which I can create maps and add various data layers. And we're looking at some global data right now. And similarly, you have a table of contents over here. And we could look at population density. This is. Um, Southeast Asia. Um, this is the island of Sulawesi where we'll be going for our study abroad this summer. And we could look at travel accessibility. This is a layer that was generated online. Sometimes these layers don't pull up very easily over the internet. So I'm just going to uh, pull up some of the other layers. Here's um, biodiversity of vascular plants, so we get a sense of just what a uh, tremendously rich area this is in terms of its uh, natural biological diversity. And we could also analyze the relationship of tectonic plate boundaries and the presence of volcanoes, very volcanically active uh, chain of islands Indonesia is, especially in this area to the south. You can get the relationship between the tectonic plate boundaries shown in this pink line and the presence of volcanoes. And of course, that in turn will also lead to earthquakes. And in, in this particular example, we have uh, one of the largest earthquakes that's been recorded in the last uh, few decades, which was a 9.0 magnitude earthquake that happened in, uh, in 2004. So lots and lots of available GIS data that's out there. Uh, just a quick reminder that you have your assignment one that's due coming up this week. And you're using maps that are created, uh, many of them scanned from historic maps, and you're draping them over in Google Earth, which is 
not really a full-fledged geographic information system. 